in 2009. Uh, the first prototype took uh, me three years to develop. Uh, we're working on version four. So uh, the, the, the second, the third, this version took two years to develop. So hardware is extremely, it's different than software. And I'm sure you guys know that. Uh, because software, you can, you can launch a software without even being fully finished. You can't do that with hardware. You know, because there's safety issue. It can, you know, it can cause some, you know, if, if the hardware is not well built, fall on the customer, you're liable to that. So it's, it's extremely hard and difficult. So we operate in two countries right now. We're about to start a third country. So we're in Rwanda and in Uganda. We have 35 kiosks now across Rwanda in six diff different districts. Last year, we served 46,000 unique customers in just uh, 35 customers, uh, kiosks. We just started in Uganda, we have two kiosks. And we have also have a software component. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. It's okay. I got a loud voice, so I'll be all right. <laughs> all right, so, uh, so that's the idea. So, so the key is, um, so when I started here in Rwanda, I was the first hardware company. Uh, because a lot of a lot of a lot of people focus on software. It's cheaper, it's faster to, to implement, and it doesn't have the hurdle. The, one of the biggest challenges I had is there was no hardware development company in Africa. Forget about East Africa. Forget about West in Africa. Where do you go to develop a hardware? So I first started in, in Europe, then I went to China, then now we went to Germany. Uh, Kenya is the only place we've seen uh, that's trying to do with Gearbox. I don't know if you guys know uh, Gearbox uh, uh, platform, but Gearbox is trying to bring hardware development in Africa. So you guys are the pioneer of hardware development. Uh, and hardware has a huge, huge opportunity because nobody's really tapping into that space in Africa. You see, software is great, but you can't solve all the problems in software. You know, energy cannot just be solved with software. You know, you have, you have a lot of opportunity economically to build hardware businesses in Africa. And that's what we wanted to, to, to show. But another thing about hardware, because not a lot of people uh, tap into that space, it minimizes your competition. <laughs> All right, so, so less people get into hardware, so you have less competition than if you do a software business. You know, it's much easier to copy a software than it is a, a hardware. So, um, so I'll tell you briefly about my life. I grew up in Burundi uh, till I was 19. Then the war started in Burundi. Uh, my parents were refugees from, from Rwanda and uh, moved to the States for, uh, for 16 years. And I had a business, I went to college. I had a business there. Uh, I had a lot of businesses. And a lot of my businesses failed in my first 10 years of my life. Just to give you an idea, but um, in 2009, I used to come here in Burundi in a region on vacation, and I was amazed by the growth of the region. I was amazed at what was happening and all the changes. So in 2009, I decided I wanted to move back, but I, I wanted to come back with a project. And that's what the idea of this solar kiosk came about. It came about, um, I, when I was coming here, I've seen that the growth of cell phones was growing tremendously. But people were having problems charging their phone, especially in rural area, in low income areas. And that's where the idea came. It was about developing a product that people can use to charge their phone. That was the initial idea. But when you have an idea, you have to test your idea. And I realized charging alone was not going to be a, 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 a sustainable business model. So that's why we came about with Wi Fi connectivity, offline, online. We came about digital services. So now we're becoming a one stop shop platform. So the idea is to bring all digital services on the one platform. So customer brings convenience. Because one thing we've discovered, especially in rural area and refugee camps, people spend hours, hours trying to get different services uh, for themselves. When, if you want MTN Airtime, where do you go? You have to go to an MTN agent. If you want to go to Irembo, where do you go? You have to find an Irembo agent. So what we, did, what we said was, why don't we combine all the services so a customer can get all the services they need from one platform. And in Kigali, we have ATR, so you can check, check them out. We have one at Seashka. Uh, we have one at, um, uh, what's that, uh, in uh, Kichukiro. So that next to Sonatu, Engen Station, you'll see a kiosk there. So we have a few kiosks, you can check it out. Wi-Fi right now, the internet is free. 
so that's the that's the main concept. And I learned a lot. So I'm not an engineer. I studied computer science when I was in college. Uh, I'm, I have no engineering background. That's why I made a lot of mistakes when I did that. So you guys are way ahead of uh, of the curve. Uh, I'm assuming most of you guys are engineer, computer science guy. Who's an engineer? Who's computer science? What you guys doing? Who's the rest of uh, What you guys doing? IT, right? IT? Yeah. IT, well, okay. Who's IT? You guys IT? Then you're way ahead of the curve. Okay? But you have some hardware knowledge, right? Yeah. You understand hardware? Okay, well, I didn't know. When I first had my idea of a solar kiosk, I thought it was a bunch of a panel, a box, some wheels you put. I was like, man, that's going to take me two weeks. I'll be in business in two months. That's what I thought. You know, so I was very naive about hardware development. And I, I learned a lot. Another thing about hardware is extremely expensive. It's extremely expensive to develop hardware because you need certification, you need to certify that your product is safe, um, importation of components because we still don't have most of our components in Africa. So it's a lot of learning curve that you do. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about myself. Uh, I was graciously invited to, to share a little bit about my story, but I want to answer most of you guys' questions to give you more value for what you're trying to do. You know, some of you guys may want to be in business in the future and promote your products. Uh, if you have a question about raising capital uh, and, and hardware raising capital, we've raised capital. Uh, we raised so far a little bit over a million dollars just on product development research. Um, and we actually fundraising right now. Uh, so whatever question you have, uh, I'm here to answer. And please don't be shy, you know, because I'm here to give you guys value, right? You know, because the, 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 one, one thing you're going to learn about entrepreneurship, I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. It's the hardest thing you're going to do in your life. Trust me when I tell you. It's the hard, because you're fighting in so many different fronts. It, it's not just about developing a product. Now you got to make money. you got to deal with teams. you got to deal with taxes. You know, you got to deal with so many different areas, so you got to learn how to multitask. Because in the beginning, you're going to be doing most of the stuff by yourself, or with your colleague or your partner. So it's extremely difficult. And I'm not here to give you guys the, the easy story uh, of, oh no, you just have to do this and that, and then you're going to be set. You know, when you're in a hardware business, you have to give between 15 to 20 years before you become profitable. Literally, because you have to include research and development, testing, implementation, and all those things. If you don't have that in your mind, you already failed. If you think it's going to be one year, two year before you you build a successful business, you already failed. So you have to already prepare your mind that this is going to be a long journey. So you have to be serious about it. You have to be extremely focused. You know, and I know when you're young, and trust me, I I know it's extremely hard to be focused. You know, to remove all the BS and, and focus on your business and build your business, you know? You have to remove all the nonsense and all the trash. So, so this is what I'm here to talk to you about. Maybe give you, I don't know who's ready for, for raising capital or who's, in, who's planning to either build this and move it to the next level to build a business. But that's what I'm here for. So, I know, man, rather, man, quiet, man, we don't, so, you don't mind? I'll just, say, so I'll just answer you guys' question. We got a, I don't know how long we have, I didn't time it, but yeah, sure. So whatever question you have, please uh, ask me. If I don't have the answer, I'll definitely let you know I don't know. But uh, if it's if it's business related, uh, I'm more happy to, uh, to answer your question. Yes? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so why, why did I pick Rwanda? Well, you know, my, my, some of my family were here. Uh, initially, I was going to start in Burundi because I was more familiar with Burundi. But Burundi, unfortunately, when I came back, economically and politically, was not doing well. So that's why I moved to Rwanda because I had family here. So it was a good way to start. Um, so how did I start? So I had a previous business before uh, uh, the area, before the solar kiosks. So I was in trucking, so I used a lot of my savings to start, to build the first prototype. Uh, 
But I, I understood after six months that I'm, I was going to need uh, more capital. So I spent a lot of time networking. So, and, and that's something I hope you guys understand this. Raising capital is a brutal, brutal game. It's, it's an unfair game. Uh, it's extremely difficult to raise capital, especially for hardware. Believe it or not, most investors don't like hardware business. Um, because, again, it's very difficult to scale in a hardware business than it is a software business, technically. But what I did was, I, I used to document my journey on, on, on social media. I'm very keen and I promote any of you guys who are building a business to be on social media. And I was, uh, so our first investor find us on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know if you guys, who knows LinkedIn? Okay, so you are, so great. So LinkedIn, so our first investor for Germany was very interested in what we were doing. Another way to raise capital is you need to join um, an accelerator program or an incubator. It's a very good way to network. I've done nine accelerator programs in five years. Now, I don't recommend anybody to do nine. You don't need to do nine. I didn't know that. I thought, you know, it was, uh, it was the way to go, but it, it was not. Because a lot of them are not as good. A lot of them are not focusing too hard at all. But two, two should be a number you should do. Uh, why? Because they, they, the biggest mistake a company do, a young company do, is they don't structure they, they, they start the right way. You know, meaning, you know, you have to have a business plan. You have to have your financial projection. A lot of young guys and women don't do that. And what happens is you're not taking seriously. All right? So accelerated program allow you to do that part. Because a lot of times, if you're an engineer, you're good at engineering, but you might not be good at administrative work. And that's why it's always good to have a partner that compliments you. I don't have one, but if I had to redo that, I would probably be looking for a partner. But, um, but the goal is, uh, uh, for you is, so, so number one, uh, you, you show your presence on social media for your business. You take picture of your project, your, your problem. You take, take a picture of your customers and all that. I, I post every two, three days. The second thing, join a, uh, an accelerated program. And now, don't focus on only one. There's hundreds and hundreds of accelerated programs across the world. You focus on an accelerated program that focuses on the type of business you build. So there's accelerated program for hardware. Uh, we did one uh, through Village Capital. It's, uh, it's a fund from, uh, I mean, it's an accelerated program from the States, but they have an office in Kenya, for example. There's an accelerated program for FinTech. There's an accelerated program for anything. Uh, there's an accelerated program that focus on, on women uh, leadership, you know. You guys have to tap into that. Uh, the third thing is conferences. Now Rwanda has built the, the, the conference center. So now you don't need to travel to the conferences. You need to be part of, of, of the network where you can showcase your product in different conferences. And we have a lot of conferences here because if nobody knows you, how do you expect people to come to you and invest in your business? So your, goal, your job is to market yourself, market your business, and showcase that your product is the best out there. You know? So it's not just about building a product and having customers. You have to market that product to your customer, yes, but to, 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 to find business and funding. And those are the areas. The last thing I will talk about is competition. Now competition is a little bit tricky because your product has to be unique. We won 10 international competitions with our product. We raised just on competition at all close to 400,000 euros, you know? So, comp there's a lot of competition out there, you know? I used to spend two to three hours every day on Google search, looking for competition. That my first three years, that's all I used to do. Well, not all, but that, that, that was most of my time after work. Two to three hours every day, seven days a week, on looking for competition. I used to apply to 20 to 25 competition uh, on, on a yearly basis, and we maybe one or two of them. So it's extremely hard, it's, 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 uh, it's very competitive, but there's money. The good thing about competition, it's, it's a grant. So you don't have to pay back, there is no interest on it. Never take a loan to build a startup. Never take a loan to build a startup. Because it will kill your business. You take a loan to grow your business, yes. But you don't take a loan to build a startup. And I know in Africa we're trying to push startups to take loans, that's, that's really a terrible strategy. But those are the strategy I use to raise capital. 
Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, my name is Jim. Uh, my name is Jim. I'm a big uh, project of the Kelly for Care. So, they are how to use Kelly to help businesses. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question because, because uh, in regards to the journey, right? You talked about like the year, you have to be prepared for the long term. Right? Yes. Um, but you also have to sort of like make a living of some sort. Yes. Uh, you have to make sure that um, you survive. Yes. For you to work. Absolutely. So how how is it? How how do you work? In regards to how do you be able to focus on what you do? You go, but also try and see how you can do. I'll tell you guys a little story, and that's a good, that's a very good question. I told you guys I failed my first 10 years of, of being an entrepreneur. And my, my financial help. So what I used to do is every time I used to fail, I used to look for a part-time job. Get a little bit of money so I can pay my bills and all those things, so I can regroup and start again. It, it's extremely challenging. My mom will tell you, I used to call her a lot when I was uh, broke, you know? I used to be on the phone, hey, I need some money, you know? Friends and family, same thing. You know, my sister will tell you. And I brought my daughter, my, my, my nephew, to, to, for them to understand also the reality of life. But entrepreneurship is about sacrifice. All right? Well, part of entrepreneurship is about sacrifice. Because one thing you have to understand, if you quit, you know you will fail. But you can stop for a little while. It's okay. You have to live, so you have to structure yourself where if you're going to start something, you can tell your parents, hey, I'm starting my business, I'm moving back home for a little while so I can build this. There's a lot of things you can do, you know, to minimize your cost. Don't party no more, right? Stop drinking if you're drinking alcohol. You know, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I'm not joking. I've been drinking five years. You know, because I knew you have to sacrifice. You see, Success or entrepreneurship is a choice. You can't have it both ways. You can't build something and have fun at the same time. You, it, it doesn't add up. You have to understand this. You have to give yourself 10 to 15 to 20 years of extreme focus. And then you can enjoy the, the, the reward of, um, of that focus and the reward of what you've achieved after those time. But that's the sacrifice you gotta do. No clothes, no nothing. You know, not buying, no shopping, no partying, no traveling, no nothing. <laughs> I'm telling you the reality of things. You know, and if you're not good at budgeting, you're gonna have problems. You know, one plus one equals two. If you got, you know, a thousand francs and you're spending two thousand, there's a problem to you. So that's, that's, that's the, the amount of focus you're going to have to have and the amount of sacrifice you're going to have to do. But it's doable. It's just how bad do you want it? If you don't want it bad enough, then, they, you know, then you know, that's you. That's, that's your choice. But if you want it bad enough, then you, that's, those are the sacrifices you're going to have to do. Yes? I just want, want to hear from you about the opinions. That's the bad thing. Yeah, sure. So I don't like the word failures anymore because what I've learned is, is, is failure is actually a lesson, right? So every time you fail, if you, if you pay attention a little bit, every time you fail, you learn something. And that lesson will allow you to not do the same mistakes again, right? So yeah, I failed the first 10 years. And I didn't fail because the business I was doing was bad. It's because I was not doing the business the right way. Same example. You know, partying and trying to have a successful business. It doesn't work, you know. But that, that's 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 who I was back then, you know. Uh, uh, some of the, the the problem was where I used to think I was going to be successful in six months. So I used to give myself six months to, to succeed in business. Every time in six months come, I didn't make the money I wanted and all. I used to quit, right? Go to another business, right? Till I realized that this 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 does not add up. Why? Because the problem we have, and that's across the world, is we 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 read the media about business, right? And we, we read all those big companies that become successful after a year, two years later, they go public. That's not the reality of entrepreneurship. That's 0.000001% of entrepreneurs, right? The rest of us will have to struggle. 
sacrifice, go through hell before you get Jesus. So th those are the things I learned, but I, I didn't quit. So I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned until I become better. And how, you know, how did I become better? I start reading a lot about entrepreneurship. I start educating myself about entrepreneurship. I was not doing that before, you know, because I didn't understand what entrepreneurship was, you know. And, and now you guys live in the in a internet age. All this education you can get from YouTube. You no longer need guys like me or mentors and all of them. You can still have those at school, but you can get all the information you need online. Yeah? So instead of posting selfies and all those things that don't bring you no value, you just wait, take the time to go online and research you know, content that brings value to what you're trying to achieve. And I know it's hard. When you're young, it's hard. You know? Because you still want to have fun. You know? So you still want to relax a little bit. But never look at failure as a bad thing. And, and, and in our culture, in African culture in general, when you fail, it's looked upon as you're a loser and all this thing. You know, when I started entrepreneurship, in, my first business was in 2000. Uh, I was doing, um, I, I was working for this company. It was, it's, it's not really my business, but I was, uh, I, I was a salesman for this company. I was earning commission, I was selling water filtration systems. Uh, and then, uh, one, one of the things that, I, I learned was that, you know, it, it was, uh, it, I, I didn't get the information. I didn't know how to communicate with people. I didn't know how to uh, sell anything and all those things. So I was very frustrated and I took things personally. And then my mom kept telling me, because I was also in college, so my mom kept telling me, listen, leave what you're doing and go back to school. Because entrepreneurship, you go, you're not looked upon as somebody who's successful. Now the, the story has changed. Now entrepreneurship is the coolest thing to do. You know, it was not cool when I was doing it, right? So, but, but at the same time, when, when, when we talk about entrepreneurship, a lot of times we don't give you the reality of what entrepreneurship is. The reality of the journey, you know? And it's extremely painful, right? In, in Africa, in, in the world in general, 70, 70 to 80% of entrepreneurs fail their first year. 70 to 80%. It's a huge number. You know, but as long as you keep going and fighting, your chance increase. See, most people fail. Most people fail the first time. They don't try it. Anymore. That's the problem. They think, oh, it's not working. This is not for me. Blah blah blah. But the guys that try again, try again, try again, increase the change, the chance of success. So don't quit. If you fail, do it again. If you lose interest in what you're doing, that's fine. Find something else. But don't quit. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to tell us about the, the box. Like those boxes, the, those, those boxes that provide the power. And uh, which box? Yeah, yeah. The box? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, I also read on your, on your website about intranets. Intranet? Intranet. Yeah, yeah. intranet. Yeah. Offline connectivity. Yes. I want to also tell you about it. Oh, so, 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 yeah, okay, so, so our box, you talking about our box? Yeah. Okay, so what we've learned is, um, so we all know internet, right? Internet, everybody knows you connect online, whatever the case is. But what, we, what we've seen is, internet is very expensive for low income. So they don't necessarily use it as much as you, you and me. Uh, so we, we looked at ways of, of how can we bring new content offline? Where you still need internet to transfer the content to the to the kiosk to the box. So we have a built-in customized router system with a memory bank uh, on the router. So we transfer content using internet to the router system, and we distribute that content via Wi-Fi. So that content can be reused as many times as possible. Now the user no longer need data on their phone to consume our content. Now of course you cannot replace offline with. Uh, with the, you cannot use offline to replace online, right? That's not the idea. The idea is to focus on content that bring value uh, to some, like educational content, health content. So we're specifically targeting specific content to push to the user. So the user, all they need now is a smartphone or tablet that is Wi-Fi enabled. And then we have a web application. When they click on a Wi-Fi, it redirects them to a web application. And that web application has a list of all the content we have. And they can consume that content free of charge. Yes? Oh, I just wanted to know if you could talk about um, the story of women who went back home and like, figuring, your 
story of moving back to Africa. Oh, yeah, okay. And maybe even uh, finding out what problems to solve in Africa. What problems to solve in Africa? Or? Yeah. Okay. Because I thought you were looking to solve a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. But so, you had lived there for like 10 years. 16. 16. 16. So what pushed me to come back? Or? Yeah. So um, in 2008, uh, the financial crisis happened in the States. It was a huge crisis, right? Uh, my house, for example, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. My house uh, lost 50% of its value uh, overnight, less than two months. So it was crazy. Um, gas price went, so I was in the trucking. I had a trucking company. I had a fleet of truck, uh, fleet of ten trucks. So gas tripled in a few months. Hey, it was crazy. Um, and I looked at, I looked at it as a sign. It was time for me to bring that company. That, that was my my ration. It was like this is a sign. Plus, I used to come to Rwanda on vacation, and I started seeing the changes. So, the first time I came to Rwanda was in '96. Uh, that was my first time coming here before I went to the states. And the second time I came here was in 2001. Then the third time I came here was in 2009. And I saw the changes happening. And for me in the States, things were declining. I was like, look, I don't want to, you don't need a genius to know what you need to be doing. So, so in 2009, that's when I made the decision to move back in Africa. I didn't know I was going to be in Rwanda, specifically at least I knew that. So from that moment when I decided I was gonna come back, I was like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm, I'm not gonna do the same thing I'm doing in the States. So I was like, what what, what area was the, the, the have the biggest opportunity? So I, I, I selected two areas, energy and agriculture. Those were the two areas I saw that I had the biggest opportunity as a business. But agriculture is not my thing, right? Going up countries and all those things, that was not gonna happen. So, I was like, this ain't me. So I was like, all right, cool. So let me look at energy. So I looked at energy as a whole, and I saw the, 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 the biggest area that people were focusing on was um, uh, uh, giving access to power to, to home. Um, and then, when, when, I, when I was coming here to do research, I realized there was three groups. There was the middle class, there was the upper class, there was the middle class, and then there's what we call the BOP, the base of the pyramid. The, I don't like the word low income really, but they're the base, they earn less than a certain amount. The definition of BOP is less than $5 a day. And I saw that most businesses were focusing on the middle class and upper class. But nobody was doing anything for those guys. And, on, and but they did 70 to 80 percent of the population across that. So to me, it was like this is where the opportunity is. So I started doing research. So you know, in entrepreneurship, number one, entrepreneurship is about solving problems, right? If you if 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 you into entrepreneurship to make a lot of money, a ton of money, you, you, your your reasoning is wrong. It doesn't mean you're not going to make money, but you, you you're not understanding entrepreneurship. But if you solve the big, the bigger the problem you solve, the more money you're going to make. That's, why, that's how you got to rationalize, right? So it's about solving problems, right? So you have to find a problem and work your way backwards. All right, so there's no problem, but it's okay. So the way you do it is very simple. I always try to simplify. I'm very practical. I'm, I'm not a, I, I was never an academic. If I tell you my academic grades, you'd be laughing all day. So, <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll simplify the things to let you know in, in business, if you really want to be successful, you have to work backwards, and then you connect the dots. That's the way it works. So, you, if when when you figure out what problem you're trying to solve, now the question is: is you're here, right? You're here. You know what problem you're trying to solve. Now you got to figure out how to get it. And when you when you know where you're going, it's much easier to get it. See, a lot of times, young guys and women they want to start something because it's cool or whatever, but they don't know the destination. They don't know where they're going. So it becomes very problematic. But anyway, that, that was a, a simple idea where when I stopped focusing on, when I finally realized what I wanted to do, it was a matter of how to get there. Anything else? Yeah. Who was the first question?
The first customer was me. You know, I was the first one working on the kiosk. Yeah. So funny enough, so when I built the prototype, it took three years to build the first prototype, right? So I'm, as soon as the prototype was built, I bought a one-way ticket, I gave everything else out in the States. Uh, I sold what I could sell, came back here with a prototype, and I worked on the kiosk in Yabukoko for the first three months. I was the one working on the kiosk, you know? I, 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 if you want to, if you don't know your customer, you're not going to make it. I had to understand my customer. I had to know who they were. I had to know if this business was going to work or not. And my Kinyaranda is crap. So, I will, but I can speak Swahili. So I used to speak Swahili. Or most of you guys know Yabuko, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of taxi guys, right? Most of them know Swahili. So when a guy used to come speak to me in a Kinyaranda, I couldn't understand. I used to grab one of the taxi men. He used to translate like give you a free charge. This is what you got to do. You got to be on the ground to understand your customer. I went for the first three months. That's when I realized. Charging was not going to make it, uh, will not be sustainable. So I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what I was going to do. Uh, but yeah, I was the first customer and the first uh, agent on my own kiosk. Plus, also, the initial prototype was crappy. So the guy who developed this didn't do a good job. So I had to go back and figure out who I was going to use again. So I lost a lot of money on, on the hardware development, also. Uh, so do your homework, do your research, also. You strategize, yes. Whatever works. It took me a year and a half to find the right business model for my business. A year and a half. Just to find what business model I was going to use to make money on this business. Why? I strategize, execute. Strategize, execute. Stuff don't work. Okay, go back. Strategize until you find the right recipe. It's like cooking. I don't know how many of you guys cook. But you know, when you cook, you put an ingredient in taste. Then that's now, okay, you put your ad, you do the same thing. This is the same thing. You strategize, execute. You know? The last thing is, you don't quit. You just don't quit. I don't care. I don't care if your mom or dad come and tell you this is the dumbest idea. You just don't quit. I can't tell you how many people thought I was doing dumb stuff. This is not, never going to work. This ain't working. This is a waste of time. Go get a job. That's why I used to, they used to tell me that all the time. I didn't quit. I just get bored. You know? Because the problem is people, people believe what they see. That's all. They believe what they see. They don't walk by faith, they walk by sight. 